Yes, we are wanting to see. Councillor House, can you hear us? Good morning, folks. Welcome to our social services committee meeting. Uh, let me ask first off if there are any declarations of conflicts of interest among members. I see none. Um, we don't have any delegations. We don't have any presentations today. Let me start off by asking for a mover and seconder for everything before us. Moved by Councillor Samwell, seconded by Councillor Miller. Thank you very much. Um, now we'll ask for separations. Um, are there items that the committee wishes to separate for discussion? Councillor Miller. Uh, item 6.1, please. 6.1, thank you. Um, other separations? Mayor? Uh, the second one. So that'd be 6.2? Yeah, 6.2. Thank you. And may I say how dashing you look today in your Bradford Bulldogs jersey? Feels great to be wearing it. Yes. 6.162 separated. That leaves... Uh, minutes. Uh, so let's go to the vote on the minutes. Those in favor, show of hands. Thank you. Any opposed? Seeing none, we'll move on. Um, item 6.1, Councillor Miller, you have the floor, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Two questions. First one, um, page 10 of the report says uh, CMSMs uh, continue to have flexibility to set different income limits in different parts of their service area. I know what the service area is, we all do. Um, the question is, does our CMSM set different uh, income limits depending on where people are living? Uh, good morning, Mary Musson, Director of Housing and Homelessness uh, Services. Uh, through the chair, yes, the service manager does set income limits uh, and currently it's dependent on the Housing Services Act. However, there will be a thorough review right now on the impact of having to set an actual income limit as per the legislative changes. Uh, further, if I could. So at the moment now, it doesn't matter where you live in the county or the city, the, the limits are the same. Is that correct? Uh, through the chair, no, the household income limits are actually uh, spelled out in the Ontario regulations under the Housing Services Act. So there are different uh, household income limits dependent on whether or not a person resides in the city or the county. I did not know that. Um, okay. Second question, um, talk about amendments, the amendments to the Housing Services Act. You have a list of excluded assets that are now included. And, and I remember talking about this back in 2019. Um, but now we're going to include our RSPs and RIFs in the excluded list, which I, I agree with. Uh, the question is, because I didn't see it there, um, what about Liras? Uh, through the chair, Liras are excluded assets because they are locked in until they become accessible, and then we have to review um, how to treat them, whether it's an asset or an income. Okay, so they're excluded. Okay, thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor Miller. Uh, additional speakers, uh, Councillor Carpenter, go ahead, please. Yes, could you explain why there's a different uh, fee schedule for if you live in the county as opposed to the city? Uh, through the chair, are you referring to the household income limits? Yes. Yes, through the chair. So the reason is that that's set by the province and uh, that's under the Ontario regulation that they have set a different household income limits that we have to follow as the service manager. When you say different household limits, because that, that just sort of sounds like you're just reading from the from the legislation. But so there's, you cross a boundary into the county that surrounds us and all of a sudden there's a different requirement. Uh, through the chair, if you look at Ontario regulation, and I can circulate this after the committee meeting, um, there are boundary lines that are drawn by through the Ontario regulation. So dependent if the service manager area is looking at county property, then there is one set of household income limits. And if it's the city, it's uh, demarked like that for other municipalities as well. So the, the provincial government sets these regulations diff uh, to different municipalities all across the province? Through the chair, that is correct. And even though the county is, you know, right next to us, uh, we rub shoulders every day, we're here. Uh, they have separate limits. Through the chair, that is correct. And we have no say about that. No, that is set by the province. And uh, our MPP, does he have any say about that? I guess he, he would. He would have to bring it through uh, his channels. Okay, that's unfortunate. All right, thank you. Councillor, thank you. Further speakers?
We'll go to the vote on this item. Those in favor? And that carries, thank you. 6.2, Mayor Davis. <clears throat> yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a report regarding the, the limit, or not the limit, but uh, the waiting list for housing that's administered through the city. And I'm wondering if you can share for the viewers the graph, I think it's graph <laughs> three or table three. Actually, yeah, yeah, there it is. <clears throat> All right, I wanna make sure that I'm uh, correctly understanding this. So through you, Mr. Chair and staff. So this tells us that our waiting list was uh, reached its peak at 1,720. And that would have been at the end of the term of council preceding the last term of council. And then since then it's declined to where it's now 1,200 or 1,214. Would you, and that was as of, I believe, December. Uh, where do you think it sits right now with pending uh, applications? Through the chair to you, Mayor. It's right now, approximately, I would say a safe estimate would be um, 1,350 to 1,400 applications. At any one time, there's approximately 100 applications that are pending eligibility. But looking at this, what I can uh, safely say that it has declined by 30% since 2018. And so what would you attribute the well, decline of almost uh, 300 over the last four years? Uh, through the chair, there's many factors that are impacting this, but I would say the efforts of providing affordable housing, we've had quite a few successful builds, such as the modular homes at 18 Sturton and the 30 units at 5 Marlene Avenue, and we're currently building. So affordable housing plays a huge factor. And the pivoting of making sure that we're using rent supplements and portable housing benefits to support households that may be in danger of losing their house housing and maximizing that through diversion and stability services. Right. So if I can just summarize it, then it's, it's a reflection of the fact that over the last four years, we have been building units and also that the, the province has been promoting the rent supplement program, which keeps people in place where they are just helps them pay the rent that they're currently paying. Through the chair, yes. All right, and so we have almost 30 units coming on in a month or two, the development on Culver and Street West. Then following that, we have the development in Paris, Trillium Way. And then hopefully following that, another 70 units on Shellard Lane. What do you think the impact that will have on this waiting list? And through the chair, I'm very hopeful that all of those builds will continue to decrease the number of households on the wait list. And additionally, with the acquisition of Luke C. Marco Place, that's going to be an additional 50 to 54 units that we will be able to offer to households on the wait list. You know, I would say, Mr. Chair, this, this reflects the efforts of the past council, which made both councils, mm -hmm. which made uh, housing a, a top priority. I believe this council will continue that, hopefully both councils. And I think we'll continue to see improvement in the waiting list. And this provides fact, a factual basis upon which to really be able to comment um, uh, uh, appropriately in respect to the housing situation. I mean, this is a situation where improvements are being made because of the fact that we are building. And yes, clearly we can do better and we can do more, but certainly this is encouraging that the trend, um, you know, as of five years ago was, was increasing exponentially every year. And now with the efforts of the past councils, this councils, hopefully the trend line will continue in a downward direction. So I think it's, uh, it's a very positive um, graph that shows the results of all the efforts of the last four or five years. Thank you, Mayor. Councilor Carpenter, you have the floor. Thank you. To staff then, uh, so the waiting list has gone down, be, but are you compare, are you adding into this list those that are being, where the rent's being supplemented, so the, where the taxpayer is funding now the private sector to manage housing so that people can stay in their own homes? Are we is, Has that gone up significantly while the waiting list has gone down? 
Uh, through the chair, can you repeat your question just to make sure I answer? Okay, uh, because we've got this graph that looks like the waiting list has gone down so that there's less people in need, but the program that the province put in place that increased the funding mm -hmm. to supplement rent incomes has gone up. Uh, so these are these need to be put together to give us a, few, a full picture of what's going on. Is that not correct? So through the chair, anyone who is applying for the Canada Ontario housing benefit, which is a portable housing benefit, actually has to be eligible and on the centralized wait list before they're granted the portable housing benefit. So whenever someone receives a rent supplement, they are remo removed from the centralized wait list. Yeah, so the wait list coming down will have a lot, a lot of that impact of the wait list coming down is it's not necessary because just the fact that we provide some more affordable units. It's also this program. It was through the chair. Yes, it's a combination of all the factors. If we had to rely solely on one source, whether it's portable housing benefits or just building housing, it would be a much slower decline. But however, the combined efforts of uh, providing housing stability to all and is that should reflected. Be, that should be reflected in this report then that the, where the wait list is gone, because I can't believe for the life of me that uh, that it's gotten easier for people to, to find place to live when rents have skyrocketed and price housing has skyrocketed and then we're suggesting that you know that the wait list has gone down that we're, we're doing people are doing much better when in fact they're actually being supplemented and that's one of the reason that's happening i'm not trying to be critical i'm just trying to get the, the, the right facts here which so, so would that be a fair statement so through the chair, and I don't know if this is answering your question or not, but we did capture that we have uh, had applications for the Canada Ontario housing benefit. And in this fiscal year cycle, 39 applications had been submitted as of December 15th. So 39 applications accounted for the removal of folks from the centralized housing wait list. Okay, that's good. And now, uh, is there, has a lot of people given up? Do you, do you get a sense that people have just given up even trying? Through the chair, I can't speak for how people are feeling, but I can tell you that there is a frustration in the community of the lack of affordable housing overall. Have you found a change in how people are uh, are, are looking at things? For example, like uh, are they moving in with family or is, are, are, are they doubling up? Uh, have you noticed any of the changes in people's lifestyles uh, to, because of the crunch in affordable housing? Uh, through the chair, I don't have the data to comment on that. Okay, and, and one last one, uh, the geared income, which is, uh, I hate the word affordable housing because it's not really affordable for most folks. So, uh, but the geared income, is that the, is that the area where we're trying to grow our, our you know, our our housing in, a, in the geared income mo model? And when was the last time we built a geared income place? So through the chair, mixed income is uh, the preferred model for building housing units. And with mi mixed income, you have a variety of income levels, everything from deeply affordable, such as rent geared to income, to affordable housing that is 80% of the, afford the average market rent set, set by CMHC. The reason for mixed income buildings is to ensure that everyone has a place. And so folks who are aging in place and may have to rely on pensionable income can still remain in the same building that they were in before, perhaps paying market rent. Like the John Noble model, then I take it. Yes, the John Noble Apartments is the perfect model for mixed income. Yeah, and we got 12 acres there, so we could probably put more there. All right, thank you very much. Councillor, thank you. Um, next in the queue, we have Councillor Sicoli, followed by Councillor Sless and Powers. Yes, thank you. Mary, I do have a question. In the, just to be clear, since we're on the, the topic, in the um, report, it shows how many people have canceled their application. Would the numbers that Councillor Carpenter was talking about um, with people who decided to just stay in place, would would those be reflected in the canceled numbers that are in here? Uh, through the chair, the canceled applications, that statistic actually reflects a number of factors. It's uh, people who no longer meet eligibility, so their situation may have improved and therefore they don't uh, meet the eligibility to remain on the housing wait list. It could be people who have had an application canceled because their family situation has changed. So they may have uh, gone on to another application or they may have removed someone from the application. So a new application had been submitted. It's also people who don't maintain the eligibility requirements of submitting their notices of assessment and other verification items to remain eligible on the wait list. 
Okay, so someone who's decided to take advantage of a different government program and stay in their current home, would would they show on the cancel numbers or no? So through the chair, it would depend if it's uh, someone who took a, uh, advantage of the Canada Ontario housing benefit, they would actually show up as having been housed off the centralized wait list. So cancellations are people who are not okay. receiving services through the centralized wait list. Okay. I was just asking because those numbers went down mm -hmm. as well, the number of cancelled. Um, and the next question I had was, it says here that 320 households or 26% of our wait lists are people from outside of Brant 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 County. Could you just elaborate for me on how that how someone who doesn't live in Brantford could apply for our wait list? Through the chair, yes. So what happens is every service manager is responsible for maintaining a centralized wait list and anyone can apply to any service manager area to be on their centralized wait list. So that figure represents households that have applied that do not reside in the city of Brantford or the county of Brant and wish to uh, uh, obtain housing in Brantford at some point. Okay. Are, is there any priority to someone who lives in Brantford? Ooh. Through the chair, no. The priority is based on the chronological date of application. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Councillor, thank you. And uh, Councillor Slash, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I guess I'm a little late in the queue here. Most of my questions have been answered. But just, uh, Mary, how, how do we compare our list here to, to comparable communities? Are we doing better? Or are we doing worse? Through the chair, it's very comparable. Staff had reached out to uh, different municipalities such as Hamilton, and they're experiencing similar trends uh, based on their, their population. So their wait lists are getting longer as well. Um, the hardest to house seems to be people who are looking for a one bedroom that are not uh, qualifying for seniors uh, buildings as of yet. Um, the wait list is long in many communities. Okay. Do we have the ability, excuse me, through the system, like you say, you don't have to live in the city or the county to apply for a, a place in the city or the county. You can apply in other jurisdictions. Um, do we have any way of tracking if people are applying in like 20 jurisdictions and, and going to move to wherever they can get in first? Do we have that ability? Through the chair, no, we don't have an actual software system that can track that. Right now, everyone's software system is. Um, dependent on the municipality so they do not talk at the same way as other provincial systems talk okay uh, just a couple more on, on our current trajectory how long would it take someone to sit on this list before they're housed so through the chair there's many factors uh, that uh, determine the length of wait time right now the shortest wait time would be two to four years for a household that is um, qualifying for seniors buildings and have a chosen multiple sites to be uh, to be housed at. Really, it depends on the household, the number of bedrooms that they are requiring, and the number of sites that they choose. Because if a person is choosing multiple sites, then whichever uh, unit becomes available first, they are ready to accept. However, if households are only looking to reside in one or two buildings, they're going to have to wait until they become they go to the top of the wait list and a unit becomes available. Okay, and just finally, um, like we, we do the mix, uh, the, the mix when we uh, when when we have a new build, is there a standard mix that we use that we have a certain percentage rent geared to income, certain percentage at uh, at at, uh, at market rent? Um, is there a formula that makes a building sustainable, or is that unique to each build? Through the chair, it is unique to each build because we do have to look at the operating expenses for annually for each building. However, we try to put a healthy mix in so that there's multiple uh, income levels that can live in a building. Okay, thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, if I can, uh, uh, Councilor McCreary, if I can, just to want to add to that to Councilor Celeste's question. Um, if I can say something, um, I'm, I'm uh, this is my last meeting here. And uh, coming, former Commissioner of Social Service in Niagara Region, and going back to the housing sector, um, I want to say that Brantford's doing it right, okay? And uh, sometimes you don't know. So when I, I left Niagara, I worked with Mary Ellen in Niagara, actually, and, and we built places that are all RGI, and it became ghettoized. And it cost the taxpayers money because of the subsidy. When I came here, I was surprised to see what Mary Ellen and, and, her, and the team had done. 
that they build buildings and it doesn't cost the taxpayers money because it's it's balanced from the rents from the three levels. And there's three mixes between affordable housing, rent supplements, and RGI between those three. And you've, and you've create the magical mix, which is really good to be seen. A lot of other communities don't do that. So they designate this for RGI and this for... So Brantford is doing it very well in building and it's not costing. And many times, as you and I have talked about, Mr. Chair, many times you don't build housing because it costs the taxpayers money. It may actually remove somebody from a building because they can't pay their taxes. So doing this in a cost neutral basis is really beneficial. And I really support the, if moving forward, um, this being, this being done and the move with Marlene Avenue is the future. Most most uh, municipalities are trying to do that, trying to provide some sort of, sort of supportive housing. So, bravo to the city and to the county. Thanks, Brian. Thank you for that, uh, Councillor Sless. Um, does that conclude your yep. remarks? I'm good, thanks, Mr. Chair. Thank you, uh, Councillor Howes. Your hand has gone down. Does that mean your uh, question has been answered, or would you like the floor, sir? No, thank you, Mr. Chair. My questions were related to uh, the mechanics of the list and the prioritization of local applicants, and both have been answered. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Bell, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm looking at the report, and I'm looking at page 10, and I'm looking at the wait list by geographic areas. And as Mayor Davies points out, we've made a real hit on getting down from 1,700 to 1,200. Um, but there are some areas like Burford and St. George, which are very niche areas. The, the only people on the wait list there are seniors. And it may be time to think about a change of strategy. Typically, we've, we've built where we've had land available. But now we have a, a clearly defined demand of a certain uh, category within our community. And I would like to ask staff whether it's possible to just think about how we can shift our modus operandi and think about how can we provide uh, appropriate accommodation for a particular group within the community in areas like Burford and St. George. Uh, through the chair, thank you for your comment. And yes, and we are working very closely with County of Brand staff and lo looking at the Russell Heights site as well that used to be uh, and affordable housing and is still being operated by the County of Brant. And absolutely, there are other opportunities and we're trying to work closely with the County of Brant to explore all the opportunities for building affordable housing. My follow-up, do we have any any leads, if, if I can use the right, if that's the term, uh, in Burford as an example? Uh, through the chair, I don't have the answer to that right now, but I can look into that and uh, respond back. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Mayor Bailey, you have the floor. Go ahead, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just to correct, Councillor Bell, the build in St. George, Russell Heights, is not a seniors building, and there is a big percentage of people that live there that aren't seniors. So just to correct the information brought forward to this committee, thank you. And Mayor, thank you for that. Um, I see no other speakers with hands up, so I'll just weigh in a bit on this. Um, I guess you know, the numbers are, are a positive thing for our community. And, you know, maybe there are other factors at play, but we collect our stats the way everybody else collects their stats in the province of Ontario. And what we've seen is a decline, which as the mayor said is good news. And it's due in large part to the work of uh, this council, but uh, more specifically to the work of our staff. And I'd be remiss in not uh, thanking um, Mr. Hutchings for the leadership he's shown here, because this is, as he said, it's his last meeting, the last time he'll be with our county friends here. Uh, we've got a tremendous staff, um, and um, it's because our staff at each level build the team beneath them uh, who actually do the work on our behalf. Um, and so I, I think, you know, you can you can read into statistics, whatever you like, but what this shows is clearly a trend that we are doing a pretty good job here. Uh, and I think probably compared to other communities, as, as the CAO has mentioned, we're, we're, we're in a leadership position. Um, Mary, I do have a, a question for you. Um, I think I heard you say earlier that at any one time we may have 100 applications pending. Uh, through the chair, yes. Uh, when uh, we collected these statistics uh, on December 15th, there was approximately 125 applications that were pending eligibility. What that means is that 
based on the information they've submitted, it appears that the household is eligible for placement on the wait list. However, they still have to finish submitting verification documents in order to be activated. So the, the pending nature um, is, it, it's, it's, a, it's a two-way street. Uh, our staff can only approve what documents uh, have come their way. Is that correct? Uh, through the chair, that is correct. We do have staff who reach back to ensure that communications has not been missed with a household, so by email, by telephone. However, it is dependent on households submitting that information. Yeah, so, so just to be clear, uh, lest anybody watching thinks that uh, we have a pile sitting on desks, the pile that may be on a desk is not um, because our staff are not being diligent. It's because we're waiting for additional info from the applicant. Uh, through the chair, that is correct. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that. Councillor Carpenter, go ahead. You have a second opportunity. To thank you. Just raised a, it's a question. Uh, so when an applicant is on the waiting list, they have to provide information annually? Through the chair, files are reviewed on a 24-month basis as per the Housing Services Act. However, uh, what is uh, provided to applications at the time of application is that it is their responsibility to update the housing department of any changes uh, to their household that may impact their eligibility on the wait list. So if they start a new job, they lose a job. If a household member joins the household or if they leave, they do need to update their file within 30 days in order to maintain their eligibility. And you mentioned assessment. So does that, when you say assessment, I mean they have to provide you their, their, a copy of their income tax through the chair, that is correct. Uh, under the Housing Services Act and the Rent Gear 2 income rules, we do have to receive a copy of the notice of assessment for every member of the household. Yeah, so oh, for every member of the household. So they must make sure they file their income tax. They got to be on top of that. That's a fair bit of... Through the chair, yes, they, they should be filing their income tax every year. Could you send me a package as if, as if I was an applicant so I could see what the process is and what I actually have to go through? Thank you. Through the chair, no problem. Councillor, thank you. No further indications of wanting to speak, so we'll go to the question on this. Those in favor? And that carries. Thank you very much. We've dealt with the minutes. We've dealt with the two separations. We don't have any resolutions. We have no notices of motion. So I'll thank everybody again for their attendance. And uh, we are adjourned. Um, city folks will be waiting around because we have the Bradford housing. And uh, we'll say farewell to our county friends until.